I mean, we did talk about we talked about like the new Resident Evil Four like remake. We we did a lot of Resident Evil talk in yeah. our chats. Yeah. There's also like five new Silent Hill games coming out. Did you see that? Yeah. It's very strange. That's that's a series that I would um like to get into someday. It's always seemed like really cool. I, I tried the first Silent Hill <clears throat> and the tank controls are tough to adapt to if you're not used to that because like I never played any of those fixed camera fixed perspective horror games like Resident Evil's like the one ones. through three or yeah and so playing them now I don't have that built in nostalgia so it's it's tough gotcha although I think there are remakes for PS2 and GameCube and 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 those consoles of that era that I think fix a lot of those issues it's funny, I actually I downloaded a PS2 emulator last night because for some reason, mm. may, and maybe it was because we watched The Shining and I was like talking to Chloe about like all the conspiracy theories about like mm. Stanley Kubrick and all the stuff behind that. Yeah. And for some reason, it made me think of uh, Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty, which I think is like the second or third game in the in like the franchise. And i think that game deals with a lot of like conspiratorial stuff yeah and i i decided to look into it so i downloaded a ps2 emulator last night and (laughs) i booted it up and the the intro sequence like whips so much ass i miss when video games had cool like animated intros and like, like like the um like what is it called motion not motion capture but like the MVs or what I don't know when video games used to just have those like fully animated intros before they started I mean they still do now but you mean like before the menu even yeah okay yeah yeah Yeah. I booted the game up and it immediately hit me with like a Hideo Kojima game and it it was like David Hayter speaking (laughs) and it showed like clips and all that have you ever I don't know have you ever played those games Metal Gear Solid? No, I haven't. Yeah. Um, Again, I tried playing the first one. It was hard as shit, and I gave up very quickly. Yeah, I think... <clears throat> which is funny, because people could say this about survival horror, too. And, you know, mm-hmm. I... So I kind of chalk this up purely to... Like you said, like, you never played those... The early Resident Evils. Um, I did. So, like, I like... Like... Um... I will say now with the newer ones, like with Resident Evil 4, um, I I definitely like that style more. The old style is more archaic, but I still like to play, uh, you know, 1 through 3, or I guess 0 through 3. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, you know, but if they had Resident Evil 4 controls from the beginning, would that have been better? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably um, maybe there 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 is an aspect to the survival horror when it does control the care the camera um that resident evil 4 is lacking um so from a horror aspect uh you know it, it makes sense but um what was i gonna say oh but with metal gear solid it's like a stealth game and i don't like stealth games <laughs> like anytime <laughs> there's and and, you know maybe it's because i've only ever really played um like games that have like a stealth mission like it's normally like an action game or like an fps like a traditional thing um but then it's like okay but now here's the the level where you can't you know zelda does it all the time you know the forbidden fortress and wind waker for example it's like okay but you know, even though later in the game you can kill mo- you kill moblins left and right, in the Forbidden Fortress you can't. If one of them sees you, you're just automatically you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And yeah. So, so maybe if it was a game that primarily did stealth, maybe it's it's better. You know, if that's the central focus. But at least in games where it's not, I hate stealth missions so much. So uh, I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm, sh- I'm sure the story for Metal Gear is is solid. Wink, wink. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Not to say that I wouldn't ever give it a chance, be, but um, yeah, 
because it is like well, a I think, pretty iconic series, but but yeah. I think well I think with the older ones you have that combination of <sighs> stealth plus old game. Which I right. think is yeah. That's I yeah. think that's like the deadly combo. Because I think, you know, only only based on watching other people play uh, Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain, yeah. it's it it's a stealth game, but also you can do all sorts of wild shit with it. Like I'm thinking mostly of like the donkey videos okay. where I think you can have like inflatable big bosses. <laughs> and so <laughs> there's like, there's a, literally a sequence where he's like trying not to get caught by a guard. And so he has six inflatable snakes and he's like, standing there as snake as well. And the guy's like, kind of like looking at him like he doesn't know which one or like, <laughs> It, it just looks like the potential for like very very silly things in a <laughs> stealth funny. game is that that's appealing to me but like the first oh, yeah. one it's like damn you got caught you're dead like there's nothing you can do about it yeah i'm i'm actually playing on the the switch the n64 like virtual console thing i'm playing yeah. through uh it's like the only one on there that it's it's called win back it's like such a well you have it too so maybe you know what i'm talking about um i've probably seen it never are there like anime characters on the cover of it that might be why i didn't touch it no it it's more like <laughs> it just like generic like uh dude doing like a pose oh, okay. with a gun type thing sure um but i'm playing through all of them and it's the only at least so far the the ones that they have released that's the last one on on as far as the ones that have like campaign story modes that aren't just like multiplayer games like I mean, F Zero technically has a story mode, but you know, it's a racing yeah. game or like Mario Kart or whatever. Uh, so it's the yeah. last one that I haven't done, um, and it's like, it's kind of, it's not like if you get caught, you're dead, but it definitely has a heavy influence on stealth and cover. But you still have a gun mm-hmm. and you're shooting, like you have to kill the dudes to progress. But it's a very slow pace game, and like, yeah, 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 uh, you can't just go it. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like with Breath of the Wild, even a little bit. Like it wasn't necessarily to an extent, a stealth yeah. game, but like you know, early on in that game, you can't just run into like a group of enemies, yeah, big dick swinging and try to just hack and slash your way through because like their yeah. weapons are way more powerful than you. So you have to be mm-hmm. more stealthy, strategic, yeah. etc. You know. Welcome back, people. Uh, this is to the there will be duds. This is episode seventy two. Of there will be duds, and of the hosts, uh, I am one of them, and my name is uh, TJ, aka J Spot Jack Cheese, and with me as always, as always, I am also one of the hosts, Nick, aka uh-huh. Doctor Funk on Switch. Sorry, okay, <laughs> let's start over. The movie is The Diving Bell and the Butterfly <laughs> from 2007, directed by Julian <laughs> Stabell. Um, and it follows former boss man editor whatever of the French fashion magazine Elle, um, who uh, his name is Jean Dominique Bobby, and he has a stroke before the movie starts, which lands him with uh, locked in syndrome, uh, which is where like you conscious mind is fully aware and functioning, but the body is not at all. Um, he uh can only blink his left eye that's the only motion he has um in any part of his body uh and basically kind of follows him as he learns to deal with it kind of um and he ends up uh writing a book which is called the diving bell and the butterfly which is what the movie is based on uh so you know if if you know that you know where the movie's going, I guess. If you know that <laughs> that's based on his book, <laughs> um, and yeah, that's just kind of it. So I forgot if I said it on this redo, but it is a, based on a true story. <laughs> that's a, it is. I did. Yeah, I did not know that it was based on a true story until the very end, and then I looked it up. I was like, oh shit. Okay, this the, all of this actually happened. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> think Kalia did either, but I. I, I did because I originally watched this in uh, one of my film classes at KCC, um, so oh, so we got okay. a little brief 
before you know before yeah. we saw any of the movies there um it was and, more uplifting than i thought it was going to be yeah right it because it started out it started out it was it was a big it was a big old bummer yeah. for a while yeah uh it was also very disorienting when i mm-hmm. <laughs> when i put this movie on yesterday morning uh i was a little a little like hung over like the night before we were up pretty late <laughs> chatting and i had, like a couple beers I, I had some tall boys i had uh-huh. some tall boys and i woke up and i was like all right i gotta watch this movie and so i'm laying i'm sitting in my chair like wearing these headphones which if you're watching this movie with like good headphones on it is uh an auditory experience i almost said nightmare sometimes it was kind of a nightmare like because <sighs> the first part of the movie you're you're locked in with him essentially and you can only really see what mm-hmm. he sees hear what he thinks and it was just like he was he was whispering in my ears because he's like responding to people in oh, his head so but he cool. can't physically he can't physically respond to people Allez, essayez. Jean-Dominique Bobby. Essayez de dire les prénoms de vos enfants. And so, so cool. which part? Well, I mean, like, I think, because, and I don't want to derail your thing, but um, I'll just say the, like, my favorite aspect of this movie that's always stuck with me since I first saw it is is the sound design and the camera work and like everything oh, that yeah. makes you feel like put you in his shoes. Um, so like having no, it was, that it was... like a greater effect would be like really cool, really disorienting. Like I said, but really cool. I think that that is literally my first note was this is so insanely disorienting. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. It was literally because I like had kind of a hangover headache and I'm just like, <laughs> Oh God! And then when it got to the part where they like occlude his eye and like they yeah. they do it over the lens, a really really cool like lens work. Yeah, like the way that they shot everything and like re- they really put you in his position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's like one of the most effective movies I've ever seen at like putting you in the character shoes like that. I mean, as yeah. somebody who's never had locked in syndrome but (laughs) you know (laughs) um a phobia a phobia of mine for sure which i feel like is probably a pretty common one like probably less less locked in and more like the idea of uh what what, what's it called when you're like in a surgery and you wake up and oh your brain is awake but you can't communicate it's almost like a sleep paralysis sleep paralysis kind of thing yeah that's one of my big fears is like waking up being able to feel everything and that but just like not being able to communicate but i think the idea of just not communicating or being unable to is dreadful and it it is funny that it is is such an inspiring story because i think the first thing he actually communicates through the the blinking method is like i want to die yeah yeah and she like scolds him but like I don't know, dude. At that point, because yeah. like, that's how, that's what Chloe said too. She's like, I don't care if I'm if I can only communicate with my left eye. Like, just just kill me, just let me go. Like, I don't. It's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. You, you I think I think as as the audience, you maybe under understand or like. I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think you're necessarily supposed to be like, oh, you're wrong for that. Like, I think you're supposed to be like, damn, yeah, like, I get it. <laughs> um, we kind of go through the phases with him. You 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 feel pretty down and desperate at the beginning because like, yeah. you're, I mean, you're locked in with him. But uh-huh. then you know, as he's telling his story and as he, you know, builds his mind palace, yeah, and then talks about like. No, the, you know the there are aspects of life worth living, and like I can I can still write and I can still communicate. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not so bad. And it's like you go on the journey with him, and like near the end, you're like, yeah, that does suck. But also, he was able to accomplish a great deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the the most definitely that that first um the first chunk 
I mean, I feel like it's like 15, 20 minutes before you get yeah. anything out of his his perspective. But even then, it's only like brief moments. You're still with him, like from his perspective, for I feel like like 30, 40 minutes of the movie. Um, yeah. But yeah, that the opening sequence, especially before you see like anything, um, anything outside of his perspective, is what's always like stuck with me the most. Like, you know, you hear like they're asking him questions and he's responding to them. And then, like, slowly realizing, like, wait, can they not hear me? He's like, I'm, he's like, I said, he's like, I said, my name is, you know, Jean Dominique Bobby. And he's, and he's like, uh, okay. And then, like, they proceed with the next questions. And then he's, like, responding and, um, just like, yeah, learning along with him, the, yeah, and the sound design, how everything's kind of, like, blurry, uh, shifting in and out of focus. It's, it's, yeah it's just super 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 effective like uh i think just done extremely well uh like a- any time it does that and then yeah you just you feel for him so much like uh when it gets to the part where they sew up his eye you're like jesus christ it's like all uh, he has all he has is like <laughs> his vision and you're taking like half of that away half of it yeah oh it's it's so it's so fucked um uh and then yeah like and then like the first the first thing or like i think it's like the first time you see like outside his perspective it's just a flash it's for like a second or two and it's because like somebody like holds like a mirror or like something he can like see his reflection and then the camera cuts to like i guess the mirror perspective kind of and you get like a flash of his face and you're like shit <laughs> yeah that's uh, not good yeah um uh <laughs> but then yeah like there's there's also like a lot of like light lighter light hearted moments or um even even in the or just like i think they write his character so well and maybe you know i haven't read the book i don't know how much like is the book this is it i know it's it's him like ex, like explaining what it's like to be to have locked in syndrome that's that's what the book is yeah. about but um like did they take is any of the dialogue from that or is the book just more kind of like explanatory i don't know if there's like dialogue or like a story in the book yeah or not, but, but yeah, there's like it's like it's the, there's parts that like, just it, his character feels like really real like i like when the doctor's like uh well uh he's like the i don't remember how he puts it but he's like he's like if it makes you feel any better or something like that uh lactin syndrome is a very rare condition only one in like however many million people have it and then <laughs> Ooh. and then john dominique's like oh great i'm so happy <laughs> like yeah very sarcastically yeah, yeah, he, yeah he retains his sense of humor and, and mm-hmm. it's funny because there's like another scene where like i think one of the guys or two of the guys that show up to install the phone they're like oh how yeah. does he communicate and he's like oh maybe he's a loud breather and they're like oh and he can't laugh but like i think the the nurse scolds them and he's like oh come on have a sense of humor about yeah it. yeah because you do get these like little flashbacks of what he was like in a previous in his previous mm-hmm. life and it seemed like he was sort of this this playboy you know on top of the world larger than life kind of guy right yeah which it a lot of his personal life is revealed and i think the scene that was like one of the hardest to watch but i was like damn this dude's cold was like when his mistress calls and he makes his wife or it's not not his wife not the mother of his three children yes yeah he does go very he makes that very clear yeah (laughs) But like, makes he he translates a message to his mis- mistress like, like I'm always waiting for you, and yeah. you know, I was like, God damn, dude. Yeah, because it's it's this is almost like a, a redemption for him. I feel like because it's like it's like yeah, I have a mistress, but I'm locked in, so you can't be mean to me. Like like it's one of those things, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> It's like, yeah. you can't be mad at me i can only communicate with my left eye yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah because you can't be like yeah this is gonna i'm gonna win her back and she's we're gonna you know <laughs> we're gonna bang and stuff like yeah 
So I was wondering if like he was gonna. <laughs> I was like waiting for him to like get a boner or something because it seemed like he was a pretty <laughs> horny dude, and he's just like it's like they're te- they're trying to teach him how to speak. It's like, all right, no, move your tongue back. Like, here's how you can speak. And instead, he just like they look down. It's like, oh. <laughs> Cause he's, cause it's like, there's a few moments where it's, it's, you see him like, he's like, I could be on the beach with anybody that I want to. Yeah. I was like, is this dude gonna learn how to like hands free jerk? <laughs> that's where this is. <laughs> that, yes, that's where the movie is like progressing. <laughs> Imagine if that, because then you'd know like that's what his book is about. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only motor function he really got back. <laughs> it's it, like it, my, it my left so f- eye isn't the only thing that works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 it makes you mad at the human brain and how frail it is. Like it, It's like this incredible supercomputer that does so many things at once that you don't even think about. But also one day, uh, whoopsies, and then you just you can only blink with your left eye. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things where I would Even be like, your brain I, works. It, it, yeah, Otherwise. I would be so frustrated to be locked in. Cause I feel like I would just be like, <sighs> you, feel, you, you really think that you could just like, no, I'm different. I can make my brain move the things and synapses and get my arm moving. And it's like, Nope, that don't work like that. Yeah. Like, like what would that be like to like, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. Think- is it like have you ever had like a because i commonly like will sleep on my arm and then like it's just like completely the whole arm is like yes complete and and i i like sat it down and i have like tried to like you know yeah move it but i have to wait for it to wake up and yeah if i sleep if i sleep with like my arm up and it like pinches like right here yeah my whole entire arm is just like blah yeah and yeah it's such an odd phenomenon yeah um so we know what it's like to be yeah it's like this is what we're saying it's basically the same thing <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's why you gotta sit on your hand till it falls asleep and then uh, you know feels like someone else yeah yeah exactly that's what he was doing the whole time he's like <laughs> that's why all of me feels like somebody else <laughs> Um, uh, I, so I will say if you haven't watched this yet, I guess, and you were to, uh, probably avoid Pluto. Um, cause I ended up watching yes. it on Pluto and it, the only option is an English dub. And I will say for a live action movie, one of, one of like the best dubs that I've seen because it's not like egregiously bad. And I think I'm pretty sure at least Matthew Almerich does his does his own dub, the the lead guy. And I know for a fact Max von Sydow does his, who plays his dad, because I know that guy's voice. I yeah. think a few of the others do, but um, there's that guy um who pops up from a prophet. You know what I'm talking about? He's only in like a Caesar. scene or two. Yeah, Caesar. Yeah. The guy, the guy who was like hostage on the plane. He's like he gave up his seat on the plane and then that dude ended up being hostage for like four years or something. Oh yeah. 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 Um, and, um, <laughs> I'm not just saying it because he's the guy from the a prophet because you know, I have s- no shade on that guy for that movie. Like I've seen him in other stuff and I like him well enough, but like for some reason his dub was like awful. It was really, was bad. it him or it was someone else? No, no, definitely not. It, uh, definitely not Which him huh? okay uh but um no it was just it was just really weird and it was just like not a voice that fits him it was just very bizarre for the most part though it's pretty decent but something i forgot to tell you too is uh the end of the movie um you get the shot of the iceberg and there's like the the little in french uh it says like uh it was like uh jean it, it okay it's in french so and it says like jean dominique bobby 43 uh got pneumonia and died 10 days after the publishing of 
the diving bell and the butterfly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so that's like the hard coded subtitles in the movie are French. And in Pl- on Pluto, there's no subtitles. So like, if I didn't know, you know, we would have had to like done like Google Translate. They just didn't to know translate it at all. Yeah, it's like it's the <laughs> only time you need to do it, and there's no option for subtitles there. <laughs> so wait, so you watched it dubbed English Did you watch dub subtitle English dub with there subtitles? Weren't, there weren't subtitles. You didn't even have the option. Mm mm. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You did. No. I just remembered. No, the subtitles for that, they tra- it's it's for the song that's playing, which is in English. The subtitles <laughs> do the song. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. Pluto, get that's, your shit together. That's what it was. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, I I rented it on Amazon Prime for 3.99 just cuz I'm. I yeah. guess I'm more of a. I'm more of a sub, myself. Uh, yeah. I. I feel like I. I would rather appreciate it in its native tongue. Plus, also French is a very beautiful language. Yeah. France seems like a very beautiful place that I wish I could go to sometime. Because yeah, all of the architecture and like even like the coast where mm-hmm. like his host like I'm just thinking like American hospitals in like you know <laughs> in a big city this hospital it's like countryside he's got a lighthouse he's got mm-hmm. the beach right there it's like he's got these grand corridors yeah. it's like i don't know man that's like such a sh- uh, shitty situation but at least you're in france where like there's actual architecture and historic shit and then in just america it's just yeah you know bo- boring old high-rise condo style postmodernist whatever buildings yeah um yeah no i with with live action movies yeah subs all the way um uh and had i known from the jump i probably (laughs) would have just done that um and for the other like weird things but but like i said for a dub not bad but yeah if it's like the first time you're seeing it i would say like go subs because i don't think you're gonna get like the same like as good as they they might be for dubs it's still good for dubs it's not like yeah you know it's you're just not gonna get the same uh you're not gonna get the same impact of here yeah exactly yeah Yeah. um i really like the the lead dude I, I guess yeah. I've only really seen him in like the Wes Anderson movies that he's been in. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was he? He was in Quantum of Solace. Mm-hmm. He's the bad guy, Dominic Green. I think I saw that one. But yeah, I think he's he's in anything I've seen him in, um, and this included. This is definitely like his 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 big. I think it's like it's what he at least in France, you know. I guess in America, if anyone knows him, it's going to be for James Bond. But um, this is like his big movie, you know, that most people yeah. know him for. And yeah, he's he's pretty great in it. I think um, he 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 like he's just he's a very good pick for the role. I think of like playing like that kind of like highfalutin sort of yeah. You know, I, I I feel like he's got a he's got a sympathetic face. Like I feel like. He he kind of does. He's he's kind of like morally amb- ambiguous with. Like, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, but but he he just kind of has that that look to him. And you're like, okay, yeah, but you're just you're a little rascal. Yeah, but we yeah. all love you anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he just he's got that look to him. Was that yeah. Lenny Kravitz in this movie? Was I, he in this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. If not, that was a it very was like, good Lenny Kravitz uh, lookalike. <laughs> Because um, it was like that flashback of him working for L. Yeah, this is like, like very. Uh, yeah, it is. Yep. Oh, awesome! Speaking of the casting of him, did you? I watched this on uh, Amazon Prime. Uh huh. And sometimes if you pause it, um, there'll be like fun facts <laughs> that show up on the screen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it also true. another a cool thing that Amazon Prime does is if you pause it, 
uh, you will see like anyone who's on screen, mm-hmm. they will like show their actor in the corner, which I think is really cool. Yeah, it saves me the time of like rushing to IMDb every time I'm like, who is that? Yeah, that's how I found out the dude was from uh, Un Profit. I was like, oh, because oh. like I I saw his face and I was like, this dude looks familiar. But uh, the original casting uh, was originally going to be uh, Johnny Depp playing Jean Dominique Bobby. For real? He dropped out of it because it conflicted with the filming of Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Wow. Okay. It's a good, good excuse, at least. And apparently Gary Oldman was also in consideration for the role, which I feel of like... Of course he was. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I feel like either of them would have been good. Yeah. Like, just... I, I, I think both of them have the range to be able to do that kind of character. No, Yeah, for sure. I could, I could definitely see it. Um, I, I, It's just interesting because it's a, it's like a French... Like, I said, like the director is, like, American, I guess. But... It's yeah. like a French movie based on like a French book about a French guy. <laughs> and it's interesting that like there were these non French dudes considered and then they're just like, okay, yeah, we'll go with a French guy. <laughs> I guess we like, have to. Would the movies like have been in English then? It's or would they have learned? Yeah, cuz I don't I don't think Johnny Depp or Gary Oldman speak like I, fluent he, French. I wouldn't put it past either of those guys to be like okay i'm gonna learn french for this yeah. movie though yeah that's you know? true i could see them doing that <laughs> and yeah i i wouldn't i wouldn't be uh mad at either of those casting but i really like matthew Marie in the role too so i'm glad yeah he got, he i got the role yeah he was in the french dispatch too but i have i only watched that once and I might have, like, on a subconscious level, recognized him from, like, Grand Budapest. Yeah. But Search. I think those are, like, the only... Yeah. Search the only other X. things i really n- known him from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Grand Budapest is so good. I need to watch yeah. that again. Yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> um, yeah, still, have, still need to see... Uh, uh, French Dispatch. Yeah, French Dispatch. It's fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's in uh, At Eternity's Gate too. That's another Schnabel movie that I watched. He, I looked mm. up Schnabel after this. Um, after I watched it, um, it's funny because like his Wikipedia, he is credited as a painter first before a filmmaker because he started <laughs> out as a painter. But like basically every movie that he's directed, except for one, it looks like, is basically about like a doomed artist. Like his first movie is Basquiat, um, you know okay. the artist Basquiat. Maybe. He's a oh man, the way that you're frozen. Um, he's just a he's an artist from New York who died very young. I forget if he like killed himself or oh, something. Okay. Um, and then he did one, At Eternity's Gate is about Vincent Van Gogh, same deal. Oh, okay. So very, very sort of like tortured artist. Yeah. Kind of. That that's kind of his whole deal. That's like yeah, literally, except for one. That's that's the focus of his movies. <laughs> <laughs> is, is artists who died young or died before their time, I guess. Right. Are we good to to move on? Yeah, I'm good. There's, yeah. Okay. Um, we started. You know, we started doing our wiki and imdb dive so we know that's 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 like usually how i can tell (laughs) i'm like all right let's (laughs) um i think the only thing i didn't really mention was uh i like the the soundtrack i thought there was like a really solid soundtrack throughout the movie it's kind of it's like almost like a jukebox like sort of yeah i was gonna say there were there were some pretty good like needle drops throughout yeah um yeah so yeah, I'll go first. Um, I really love this movie. Um, again, uh, the the major standouts for me is the the sound design and everything putting you in the guy's shoes. Uh, but I think it's like I think it's a good like solid story too. It's pull you know g- gives you emotions stuff like what movies are supposed to do. <laughs> um, 
those yeah the moments of levity are much appreciated because otherwise this would just be a dour depressing just <laughs> downer fest um and yeah again the i think you know even in the english dub i'll say but but you know a bit better better in the original uh good acting you know you can still see it the the, the people the visuals are the same and in, in the uh I have seen it in French, so, for, you know, from memory, I remember the performance being all good. Um, I think I'm going with an 8.5 for me. I um, think okay. it is a pretty stellar movie. If you're, And you know what? I think it's a great one, too, if you are, for people who maybe haven't given, uh, like, foreign films much of a try, if, you know, because a lot of people don't they stay away from subtitles it's it's pretty scary uh even with the uh the really jarring first act or whatever i th- i think this is a good one to to try out um if yeah if you're if you haven't tried too many foreign films yeah so yeah i would say uh, you know i think the f- like french films in general sort of have this reputation for being highfalutin artsy fartsy yeah ventures and this this and i think you you did say that the the guy is french but he was born in america i do think it's it has more of those like american sensibilities in terms of like yeah maybe that's why so it's it's you know it's not just a still image of the sea yeah i mean there's a little bit of that there's a little bit of like of uh bobby's like narration and just sort of you know like my life is is a pain a lot like of that the, kind of thing the that, diving like, bell visualizations yeah you know. yeah so it's got just the right amount yeah there, but I, it does have a little bit of artsy farsy stuff but yeah but it works yeah. i think it works uh so for me yeah i'm i'm like i'm pretty much right around there i'll i'll, I'll go with like a i'm gonna ooh. Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a decimal. I'm I'm thinking like a seven point eight, I guess. Seven point eight, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm 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 right around there. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it's more uplifting than I thought it was gonna be, which was nice because the first act really was like, it's like, oh, this is like, <laughs> yeah. this is just gonna be a a bummer and a slog. But it was it was surprisingly more lighthearted and and funnier than I thought it was going to be, and the story. The story was pretty inspiring, I thought. Like the yeah. you know, he's locked in, but he found a way to use it and you know, still managed to make what I assume to be a great piece of art, aka the book that this is based off of. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, performances were pretty good. Uh I really like the lead guy. I will never remember a Frenchman's name. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, his first name's Matthew. That's that's pretty Matthew, American. Matthew, that's right, that's right, that's right. It's it's yeah. It's it's American sounding, but it is a very French spelling of the name. Yeah, uh, you could almost see it being like Matthew. Cool, awesome. Well, I'm glad you yeah. liked it. Um. Uh. Uh. Speaking of, I don't know. Here's an ad break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we uh, are we back? Yeah, I'm thinking we're back. <sighs> cool. Oh. Uh, I read a book, which lately my uh, my attention span hasn't been long enough to do that. But there is a new book in the John dies at the end series that came out. I read it in a week. I read, I read the thing in a week. It's like, it's like 416 pages, but also it's, it was pretty easy read. His books are, his books are pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. I I feel like I've read like, I mean, some of the visuals, some of like the visual stuff that he describes, you're like, wait, what is this thing? That's at six arms and it's got like, what is that? Yeah. But I think, for the most part like dialogue wise and narrative wise it's pretty pretty straightforward but uh yeah yeah it's called if this book exists you're in the wrong universe that's right which <laughs> all of his titles are just getting longer and longer and more <laughs> contrived like 
Yeah. Because the first one is John dies at the end, which is, I'm pretty sure it was just to like, I don't know, it's, it's almost like clickbait a little bit. Uh, yes. Which, n- knowing, you know, that he worked for Cracked for so long, which sort of originated that method of getting people to click on an article. Yeah. Although I will say, with Cracked, there was at least substance to back up the article. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, BuzzFeed, it was just like, here's a picture of a celebrity and two sentences written about them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know where this book fits in with, like, the overall like the four that he's put out so far which ones have you read uh okay pretty much i you know i have uh all of them up to except the newest one um i've only read john dies at the end and then um the uh and i think because i i think i've asked you about this before so i think it's pretty john much and dave the in the thing. temple of zalna thuthu something like that so, the, so you haven't read spiders is that's the second one yeah no but oh but from what i've heard i think it's pretty similar like it's, it's there are some similarities i think i think the does does john and dave in the temple of does that open with him in the shower maybe and like he sees or you think like he's looking at the dad. shower <laughs> <laughs> no i think there's i think because i do think i read some of temple and it starts out like he's in the shower and like he turns the water on but he noticed that he notices that the water is like cascading around something hmm. and he's like confused by that and he's like oh no there's something in my shower that's why the water's like running around it and then it because that scene is in spiders as well okay man i thought you had spiders might be my favorite book oh really of like, I mean, obviously, because I, I did read the first, because I wanted to read them all up to the lead up of the fourth book. So I reread the first one, oh, okay. and then I started the second one, and then we went up to Traverse City, and I was like, I want to buy this at a bookstore. And, like, uh-huh. I found it there and picked it up and just pretty much inhaled it. Um, <clears throat> damn, I, th- I thought you had at least read the first two. Uh, I think my biggest critique... Is that I, I think he tends to be a fairly, I don't want to say formulaic writer, mm. but the, the sort of like asides in the first John Dies at the End book where it's like, here's how the situation relates to a cultural phenomena that happens in the human race and sure. like trying to like, you know, talk about the nature of people and life and these sort of like philosophical asides. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, it almost becomes like a crutch where he does it a lot where like something will be happening and then it'll just be like a couple paragraphs about like people are like this and yeah. this is why people do this. And this one, the fourth book kind of has like a, like a cell phone, like looking at your screens kind of thing, mm. which I think, I think he handles really well. It's definitely not like, kids these days and their phones like he takes a more nuanced approach Mm -hmm. to like what it does to people and like you know their attention spans which is funny because i didn't read for a long time because it was just like i just sit there and scroll tiktok which i'm I'm like a month out from not using tiktok anymore which is amazing (laughs) yeah but uh yeah you should you should read this book is full of spiders and the other ones uh yeah, saying that this one would, is like my least favorite makes it sound like I didn't like it, and I really, really liked it. So it's oh, okay. like I've read the first one like three or four times, second one like a couple, and then I've only read what the hell did I just read like when it came out oh, in okay. like 2017, and I haven't read it since. So I'm I'm gonna hopefully revisit all of them again. Yeah, I, but uh, it was it was pretty good. I have I have two and three right there. And then I have the dust jacket for the first one right next to me too, but you know, <laughs> still never got that book back. <laughs> who did you, who did you let borrow? And oh, my. I think like was, a decade ago, probably. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. Um, yeah. So that's a bummer. Although I will but. say, I think I let, I lent out my copy of the first book quite a bit too. Yeah. 
like one uh one of my friends former co-workers i think she had it for like <clears throat> two years Damn. and then didn't read it and then she was like moving like she bought a house i was like hey do you still have my copy of john dies at the end She's like yeah I was like, can i get can i get that back yeah i mean i'm i'm a person who um does not reread books so it's not a big deal as far as that but i am a person who really likes to have a nice complete collection on like yeah. my bookshelf so i can look at it and uh-huh. be like, aha look at that all of the books well yeah and like and the john dies books they're all uniform they're all like at least the hard covers yeah same size yeah mine are all the hard same covers, like yeah. style of dust jacket yeah that's always i think the f- the font in the first one is a little bit smaller but the font in like mm. two three and four are like the same size but the oh, it's yeah. very yeah it's very uniform yeah i see what you mean um and the end uh, the his other series which i've only read the first one the futuristic Futur- violence and yeah. fancy suits yeah i have that one on my wish list i just i ha- i mean it's fine different character i don't know i'm like i don't know if i want to like especially since you know i haven't even read any of the other john dice books it's probably a good sign that i shouldn't get it not that for any reason other than just i don't know i'm i'm bad at reading books because yeah because the first john dies at the end from memory is like still one of my favorite books yeah um there's really no like good reason why i haven't read it other the sequels other than just like i'm <laughs> i'm really terrible at reading shit <laughs> i wish th- there's so many fucking books that i have that I, I really would love to read i just i'm so i'm just so fucking slow it took me like a year to read a game of thrones and i thought that was a great book I really enjoyed it every time I read it. It's just, just really bad at, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I think, because I use, I use Goodreads, and I've got, like, three or four books that, like, the last time I updated my progress was a year ago. Mm. I need to, like, I, I really should just get, like, a paid service to, like, Audible or something to, because, yeah, to me um i guess just the way my brain works like i'm if i if i have an audiobook it's kind of the same like sensory experience as reading to me so i really should yeah. just should just put a little money into yeah. into that cuz i'd probably consume a lot more yeah i yeah it's tough cuz it's for me it's like oh yeah it's basically like a podcast but it's a book like yeah but also i don't know i don't know if i can like my brain is like but you're not you're not using your eyeballs to physically read something so yeah i would um, there's like a block where i'd be like yeah but someone else read it to you you didn't read it yeah i I mean i say that i have read books if if i get the audiobook because yeah to me it's same my brain kind of pictures stuff the same way i guess Mm-hmm. Oh, Chloe was telling me that I guess there was some discourse on Twitter about uh, people. I guess they're they're like, okay, well, let me ask you this: when you read something, do you like visualize in your head, like in your imagination, like characters and locations and actions and uh, as opposed to just like not as opposed to just uh, yeah, kind of re- yeah, I would say. Here's the thing is, like, I never... When people are like, oh, they cast this person as this character, I, I that's not how I pictured him in the book. To me, beyond, like, whatever description you get in the book, I don't really picture, like, faces or anything like that. Um, yeah. It's almost like a dream. Do you ever have a dream where, like, stuff happens and there's people there, but, like, you don't see faces? It's just like... Sorry, I thought you were... I thought you were about to go into the... Do you ever... Do you ever oh. have a, a dream where... <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no it, it yeah it's sort of like yeah I, I when i when i think of like characters of books i don't think of like what celebrity do i think would look mm-hmm. like this character it's just like like you think john and dave and amy i'm like yeah amy is like i'm like i know a they red-headed have... woman yeah like that's and like may and maybe it's like maybe based on other things that i you know have seen before so it's like yeah she's like that one red-headed girl from foster's home for imaginary friends or something <laughs> like 
there are some pieces that my brain pulls from mm-hmm. like pop culture and media that I've seen before. But A- yeah, for the actions, most part, yeah, it's, actions and actions and like setting as like the opposite. Like I, I, I feel like I fully like try to fill in the blanks there for like the locations yeah. and everything that, but like to me, I'm like, okay, the characters, I know they have faces in my brain. I'm like, okay, they have right. a face, but I just like, I don't like, I just yeah. don't put enough energy into that, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, apparently there are people that just don't like, they just literally That's read weird. text. That's weird. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. It's like this, this kind of shit, like, I feel like it's baked in that you have to have some sort of imagination because otherwise it's just ink on paper. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. Maybe just all those people are liars. I yeah, think that might be, be that. The <laughs> it could be that. That's probably that. <laughs> uh, the only other thing uh, I have is I went to see The Shining last night at the, at the theater and every time i watch it i'm like this movie is so good mm-hmm. is is great uh i feel like i pick up on maybe not necessarily pick up on something new but i feel like i find a new appreciation for a certain aspect of it and that that's a movie that i think on its on its surface can be just interpreted as a scary paranormal movie but i think with you know knowing stanley kubrick and his attention to detail like found myself scanning the picture for just everything like Mm -hmm. i don't think there's a single thing in that movie that wasn't put in a place intentionally um but in a less conspiratorial way uh i think my favorite part this time i i was just i was really loving it was uh scatman crothers as dick halloran Mm-hmm. I I enjoyed his performance so much. Like him him talking to Danny. Like that that scene where he's like talking to Wendy and he like kind of looks over at Danny and telepathically is just like, "You want to get some ice cream, doc?" <laughs> yeah. It's just I don't know. It was like it was he's very like he's a very warm character, but it was yeah. like a very unsettling thing at the same time. Like him like telepathically communicating and just like, "I know you can hear me." Yeah, and like their little conversation when, like I was, I was getting chills watching it when Danny was just like, "It's like, are you afraid of room two thirty seven? And he's just like, "No," but he's like, "How do you know?" Yeah, I don't know. It was it was great. Yeah, yeah, that was like that was my standout favorite part of this viewing was Scatman Crothers. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah, love that movie too. It's a uh my like probably a tenor if it ever gets pulled from the cup yeah easily that's like <clears throat> that's arguably like a top 10 movie for me um i yeah i absolutely love that movie it's it's like and it's like probably my favorite horror i i flip flop a lot between that and the thing but i th- i th- i think mm, the shining's mm-hmm. my favorite um favorite kubrick for sure too it's favorite a lot Ooh. of things i think it's uh great. i might dr strange love by me by favorite cube dr strange love is like my other favorite too yeah I, that one that one doesn't get it you know the ones you always hear about are like i guess the shining but like you know 2001 or mm-hmm. uh clockwork, clockwork orange, orange. And full metal jacket all good well, yeah all good but dr strange love is so good <laughs> it's yeah that was one that was one that uh i picked up I picked up on some Criterion sale. I hadn't seen it in like a decade. Yeah. Like when I was like 20. And then I, I watched it again, like when I was living at my parents' place, like in the middle of COVID. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, holy shit, this movie rules. Yeah. And I think that that sort of like post Soviet, like conspiracy paranoia, like that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this never really goes away in this country i guess <laughs> yeah so it felt very applicable even though it was a movie from like 1968 or whatever year that movie came out 64 i think four yeah 2001 to 68 i know um okay okay so it's somewhere somewhere in between there um yeah yeah and it's it's funny too like it's just it's, it's so good, funny it's a good old comedy it's 
Um, uh, what's his face? I can't Peter remember Rose. his name. George Peter, C. Scott, Peter, I think. Peter Sellers. Uh, is that even his name? What's the? Th- I think it's. Why am I like? <laughs> He's playing three characters. Yeah, I should know because um. Uh, yeah, Peter Sellers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, and George C. Scott. Sterling Hayden's character is fucking great too. He's he's the as Jack T. Ripper. Yeah, the dude who like pulls himself <laughs> up in the office and like that scene with him and Peter Sellers is like one of my favorite scenes <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> I, I I just I love the way that he shot too, like the when he's like leaning back with the cigar. Yeah. And he's just like, he's like they're coming they're coming after your seed or or whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. He's just like proto QAnon, just like they're coming after your essence. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, no, it's it's so good. But George C. Scott, which apparently like the fun fact about that is, Kubrick I think originally had him play it straight and then told him to do like sillier versions of the takes and then ended up using the sillier versions and George C. Scott apparently was like very upset by that because I think he was like kind of a he was like a very haughty like I am an actor and it's like kind of that golden era actor yeah but that that makes that movie George C. Scott being zany is like Mm -hmm. the best shit yeah yeah okay yeah and then I uh, finished the Hellraiser series um, so to cover the whichever About ones time. <laughs> I didn't yeah just in time for for Halloween um uh and I will say the ones I was dreading the most uh which were the post Doug Bradley ones uh aren't good movies but compared to a lot of the previous ones I thought they were like, they were great in comparison, you know, like, um, I was really surprised. I was like the whole time I was like, I was just holding on to those, the, the Doug Bradley ones. Cause they seemed like at least, I don't know, at least they had him. And, and I watched a trailer for the, the post him, which is a Hellraiser revelations. And then judgment are the two that don't have him not counting the, the reboot, which I've already covered. Right. And I really like, it's my favorite one. Um, uh, and those ones look like, and I still think this, they look like just a notch above something that would be submitted to like Fortnite film contest, <laughs> like quality <laughs> oh, and stuff. Man. I mean, they have, they have like decent effects for how low budget they look like. Okay. Um, but they look really bad. So I was just, I was dreading watching those and those are like yeah. the, the lowest rated ones too. But, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's what did I, the last one I covered was Inferno, which I hold pretty much the same opinion that I did when I talked about it last time. It's like, it's, it's almost good. Um, uh, but just not, not good. <laughs> just, just under. Um, but then after that's, uh, Hellseeker, which surprisingly, I, cause I thought she was only in the first two brings back, uh, Kirsty again. Um, oh my god yeah uh but she she disappears at the very beginning of the movie so she's actually not in it that much she's in like the first scene there's Uh, a car accident she disappears and then it follows her husband played by uh dean winters um that's right i remember pointing i remember seeing that when we were talking about it i was like oh yeah yeah. the liz lemon's boyfriend yeah and chaos or the yeah mayhem mayhem that's right yeah that's that's funny that they got her from the original to be in it because I get, I don't know I want to I want to find out when that trend started, of like these like low budget movies that that tout you know an original actor from the original yeah. franchise and they put them on the cover and they're featured super prominently in in trailers and like material leading up to the movie, yeah. and then they're just they got five minutes and then all right and that's a wrap like I feel like there's a ton of like christopher lloyd movies where he he's in it for like a scene yeah and then he's gone yeah i think i feel like there's a lot of kids movies that feature like 
like I'm thinking of like those low budget Christmas movies, and it's like Ray Liotta's in this movie, or yeah. Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> it's like that. Snow yeah. Buddies. <laughs> yeah. He's in it for five minutes to give some <laughs> sagely advice, and then is very quickly whisked away and never seen again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I I will say she is in it more than just the first scene. There's a lot of like flashbacks okay. and stuff. But it was it did kind of feel like that for a time. Although at <laughs> least now you don't see that like i didn't know she was in it until i watched the movie but i'm sure when this was coming yeah. out yeah she was probably all over it um mm-hmm. <laughs> that one was not good though um there's just there's this messy mush I, I don't know it's it's just the way that they're it's the way that they're shot it's the way like everything of those later ones they're just they're really indistinguishable from one another so fucking messy like i i there's not much to say between like Hellseeker and then the next one, which is Deader, and then the one after that, which is Hellworld. Those are the last three uh, Doug Bradley ones. And they are m- mostly indistinguishable from one another, other than, oh, Hellseeker has, has Kirsty in it. And there's like, yeah, kind of like a neat twist. There's, I would say that about Hellseeker and Hellworld, where I was like, oh man, the, the, like, the resolution is like almost good. But everything before it fucking sucked. Everything leading up to it blows. Yeah. Their their naming convention sounds like now defunct uh, roller coasters at like amusement parks. Oh, yeah. Hellseeker, Deader, Hellworld. Like, they all sound like novelty roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so I, I just like skip over those ones because, yeah, not good. Just in general. Hellworld has a couple of people in it that were fun to watch, uh, like Lance Hendrickson and uh, Babyface uh, Henry Cavill, isn't it too? Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, then you get to Revelations, which I think is generally considered the worst. Um, uh, but I gave it a higher rating than <laughs> at least like half of them, because um, it was like. I th- and I think a lot of people just like outright hate it because of n- new pinhead and from a certain yeah. angle, he is like a little silly, but like, I thought he was decent in the movie. Like, yeah, it's, it's different than Doug Bradley's performance, but I thought it was fine. And it like, it's almost like a soft reboot because it's different. It's not like a, a dude, like an older guy and his niece and whatever, but it's like these two kids go, to uh these like two friends they're like richy rich kids uh mm-hmm. one of them is kind of the frank character he opens the box okay. he gets you know pulled to hell and then he escapes and then the friend a couple of rich kids super into bdsm <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then um he comes back and the friend has to like kill people to you know oh, help okay. him get his his body back and stuff but uh there's like there's a couple little twists okay. and i was like okay i'm okay with these these are like kind of neat twists i didn't see these coming um and it was almost like that return to the original like doing something so similar and again it wasn't like beat for beat the same like that was the same but then like the resolution and kind of where it went was different um but it still had that same core of like a person escape from hell and is killing people to regain his body um it was like so that return to formula made it feel more fresh than like the last like five that were different like you had like the detective noir one you have like the like college party kids one you have like a mystery cult (laughs) one um those are all like trying different things and yet this one that is like more similar to the first one than like any of the other ones feels more like fresh uh (laughs) but it is still pretty low budget um not super great acting and like despite what i was saying about like yeah you know it is neat and original there's also like you know it's it's very low budget like a dialogue and script isn't like you know top notch yeah um and then judgment the one after that so the last one before the the reboot the 2022 one um has a a new another new pinhead um 
I also thought he was fine. He's probably my least favorite of any of them, but he's still fine. Um, but I actually dug that one quite a bit. I almost, I almost gave it a, above a five. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, it's another one like Inferno that's like almost good. Um, and a big part of that is, um, it does more lore expansion and I love when this series expands on the lore. And what this one does is it introduces a new sect of like hell demons. So there's like the Cenobites and then this introduces what's called the Stygian Inquisition. And it's very, it's, it's kind of like corny or whatever, but like the characters that they bring in. So they're, these guys aren't Cenobites. They're not like emotionless (laughs) Uh, they're still kind of the one guy has like scars and cuts all over his faces, so he looks like uh, okay. not like a human. But they're not like you know robotic. We are Cenobites, and we come here to do this one thing. You know, um, and they're so they're really fun. Like the the one guy's the <laughs> the auditor, and what he does is he processes. They process souls, so he like he has like a typewriter, and he's like asking people questions about their lives. And then once he's done, the assessor comes in, who is just, who just looks like a regular dude. He's like this fat dude with like a jacket, <laughs> with like a, a suit jacket on, but no shirt. So he just has this like open belly. <laughs> and he like comes in and he's like, has this like wild smile on his face. And he's just like looking at the people. And then he like takes this bottle. He, he like, uh, all the papers that have all the questions that the auditor, um, you know filled in are on a plate and then he has like a fork and knife and then he has this little bottle this bottle to uh to like as like a salt and pepper thing but it's children's (laughs) tears (laughs) and he like pours those on the thing and then he like cuts it up with the knife and he's like he just like starts shoveling the papers into his mouth oh my god as he's like as he's like has this like big ass grin on his face staring at the people (laughs) and then he like vomits it into this receptacle and then these like naked chicks on like the floor below it gets like dumped into this trough in front of them and then they like stick their hands in the vomit and then they determine whether the soul is like guilty or innocent (laughs) based on that but like dude the 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 process and those two characters the auditor and the assessor are and again this is relative to this series um, but I think I would still almost recommend this movie, like regardless, because those characters are so much fun. That's the um, director. Yeah, the auditor is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. And it's, and it's pretty good. Yeah, they're they're just they're a lot of fun, and like for this series, after watching so much bullshit, I'm like, oh my god, this is <laughs> so fucking nice to have like new characters that are fun and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and like they're trying to do they're trying to do something different thank fucking god and it like yeah it kind of somewhat works um but then you get like the main story with like all the human side of it is like eh it's more by the numbers it's and the twist at the end is kind of dumb i think but um i thought it was like it was somewhat worth it for for the the hell characters like the new the new stuff they introduced yeah. there pretty pretty fun stuff yeah um well i guess you could say that no one uh suspected the stygian inquisition yeah (laughs) yeah right (laughs) Um, uh you uh you may not be done with your uh descent into hell yeah it's finally over because there's no you might not be done with it because you remember when I was like, I, there's a new movie? I thought there was a TV series. There is a TV series in the works. Oh, okay. It's an Well, I guess it's an article from 2020, so maybe it's not as accurate. But apparently HBO is developing a, a TV series based on Hellraiser okay. from uh, our friend David Gordon Green. Okay. I don't hate it. Um, you know, yeah. as much as I have been burned by the series and I, this is the thing with like horror franchises like this is like, um, uh, it's like, 
uh, yeah, I'll watch. I mean, there is the added bonus of me thinking the newest Hellraiser is the best one, and like a movie that I genuinely like enjoy, regardless of you know mm-hmm. the rest of them. But like, even after the punishment of <laughs> of this series of watching through it, it's like, yeah, I'll probably watch any new Hellraiser that comes out now. You know, <laughs> it's like once you once you have like, um kind of steeped yourself in these horror franchises it's like you're pot you're you're pot committed yeah you're there you're there for life it's like nightmare on elm street (laughs) yep i'm gonna watch any of those um and yeah hellraiser hell yes (laughs) sir um (laughs) but yeah like compared to nightmare because that's the one that's like the series that i dove into last year it's like that's a series that really feels like even when except for the remake they did in 2010 that one's doesn't count for this everything before that it feels like that is a series that like the creators cared about their fans they knew what they liked they liked freddie being you know one-liners and all these crazy kills they knew what people liked, and it felt it was just i really love that series it's like it's funny because it's about this like pedophile murderer guy who's like murdering kids but it's like it's almost like a feel-good series to watch like it's it gives you like warm fuzzies because it's just it's like a comfort movie almost but these are like gross and it really feels like (laughs) they don't care like so many of these feel like cash grab movies cash grab sequels yeah um or to like you keep put the you rights. put Pinhead on the cover and you're it's a it's casting a wide net. Yeah. You put Pinhead on the cover and there's a certain demographic of people that are gonna be like, oh shit, another one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And and especially because like, um. There's I think I read that like three or four of like the four latter, uh, Doug Bradley ones were not written as Hellraiser movies. They were written as unrelated properties, and then they, like, turned them in. They just added... And, like, some of them really feel that. Like, you really feel like... (laughs) Yeah, these feel like different movies. Um, Wild. And so it is literally like, yeah, we're going to slap Pinhead in there to, to sell DVD copies. And, like, there's never any movie where Pinhead is in it for more than... Like, maybe the new one he's there in it the most and uh pinhead doesn't show up until an hour into the new movie um but it might still be the one where they get the most screen time it's always like Damn. you know how in the first one you were like oh i'm surprised he's only in it for like five ten minutes that's basically every movie interesting which is a bummer because huh. it's the most interesting part those movies could be a lot more fun, a lot better. <laughs> like they could be just as shitty, but you just have more Cenobite shit in there, and it, it you know maybe you're supposed to be know. edging, like yeah, <laughs> you're you're just edging the whole time until until Pinhead shows up. Yeah, I guess. So. And then you solve the box, and then you just you release. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> um, That's gross. All right. So weird series. <laughs> I don't know. I'd I'd recommend the first one may you know i like like less than half of them it, it definitely like i would recommend <laughs> the first the first one and then if you if you're into it the second one because i like the second one more the remake hands down again is my favorite and then yeah maybe judgment just as like hey look at this series trying to do something fun <laughs> Um, <laughs> other than that, I wouldn't, you know, don't waste your time. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as Elm Street though, fucking watch every single one. They're, they're all yeah. so much fucking fun. <laughs> I'll just do really quick. Um, Relic and Deadstream are two other, cause we're still in October here are two other horror movies that I watched this week. Uh, both pretty solid relic. I, I adored as like a, between like an eight and nine for me um really great really depressing um about like dementia and like generational trauma and that kind of shit but it's like kind of like a haunted house thing um but really fantastic really creepy um and just 
it it gets a little trippy um but fantastic movie um highly highly recommend it uh deadstream uh i gave like a seven um so i also really enjoyed it um uh it's like a streamer is live streaming his that's right yeah we talked about that one yeah in a haunted house and it's like an actual haunted house and you know he starts getting you know actual ghosts and everything and pretty spooky anything you put in like first person camera perspective is instantly more scary to me even if it is a horror comedy like deadstream um but yeah it was pretty pretty spooky for me um and yeah just a a really really fun horror comedy uh the main character is kind of uh irritating but i think that's the point um because he is like he's leaning. a streamer you're saying yeah yeah right he's le- and he <laughs> leans super hard into that and also like he's it's supposed to be like he's back from like a six months hiatus after being canceled for i think it was nice. something like something uh, he did something you know it was like being like ableist or sexist or something like that they, oh. they like reference it a couple times but you don't see it like directly um so he's like <laughs> an obnoxious like kind of offensive like and he'll say like right he's like oh i'm not like he there's like a couple times in the movie even where he's like you know like i'm not even like really saying this because you know i don't want to you know i don't want anything to like try to cancel me again but you know and then he'll like say something kind of offensive and like you know but it's like <laughs> i'm just know. i'm just saying yeah yeah that's awesome yeah that's funny um so yeah but recommend both and highly highly recommend relic i thought it was a fantastic horror movie um so i just wanted to get those out of the way because (laughs) for you guys we're already like halfway through november so it's past (laughs) horror season but um (laughs) so i guess i want to get those all this all the horror movies out of the way (laughs) you know yeah i know it's nice to be like up an episode but like we should probably just take a week off so we can get back on maybe like a, a yeah well, hopefully after after October, it won't be as obvious, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see. So for next week, it is uh, Thanksgiving for you guys. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to be doing, uh, in, in lieu of a cup pull, we decided we, we picked something special uh, that's not necessarily a Thanksgiving movie. Uh, but uh, I feel like it bridges the gap between yeah. like s- sort of spooky Halloweeny into yeah. fall harvesty autumnal vibes. Yeah, definitely fall vibes, and that fall vibes thing <laughs> um, is uh, over the garden wall uh, from 2014, directed by Patrick McHale, McHale and Katie Krent. Uh, and yeah, it's a it's a mini series too, not a movie. So I don't think we've done this before, but it's about the length of a movie. So you know, kind of. Yeah, it's like ten episodes, eleven minutes long. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the length of like a two two hourish movie. Um. So yeah, and it is on HBO Max. Uh, so and watch Hulu. It. And Hulu. Okay. Yep. It's only showing HBO f- for me for some reason, but. I think oh. you're right because I think I watched it on Hulu last time I watched it. Uh, so yeah, it's on those if you want to watch it before uh, next week's episode. If you don't want to be spoiled, uh, these episodes come out every Wednesday at 7 p.m. EST on Twitch and YouTube in video form, as well as uh, in podcast form on op- Apple Podcast, Apple Pod, Apple Podcast. Yes, Spotify. And now also Amazon. What is it called? Amazon. Amazon Podcast. Music. Amazon Music. That's a, that's a new. Which one they have podcasts. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. So that's all our shit. We also have socials on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So follow those if you want to see uh, sporadic posts. <laughs> <laughs> um, follow us on youtube we we get really good engagement on youtube for some reason so that's true check yeah. us out there yeah um jack our, jack up our uh, son of the mask view count <laughs> <Even more. laughs> um so uh 
with Okay, wait. This is this is going to be tricky cuz I don't want to I don't want to say I don't want to be too I feel like this is really easy to be ableist here. <laughs> Yep, I was thinking like, hmm, what can I? Th-? I was like, can I just? <laughs> I was like, yeah, mm. you know. yeah. Got that Stephen Hawking lip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or we'll say, I'm, I'm your real dad, and I'm locked in my apartment. <laughs> so sorry, but I'll give you a phone call still. Um, <laughs> TJ, aka J Spot Jack Cheese, uh, and with me as always. Oh shit! Uh, as always, I am your. Oh <laughs> uh, god! Like now, I'm just I'm super. You know what? I'm locked in on being a blast. <laughs> so if that's me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Nick, aka Doctor Funk on Twitch. Nice. Uh, <laughs> adieu. Goodbye. <laughs>